What's up? It's Josh Hewitt from Top Form Fitness and it's time to do it with Hewitt. In this video I wanted to talk about intermittent fasting. So cyclic fasting is nothing new. It's been pretty popular in the health and wellness industry for a few years now, although it does remain still somewhat controversial. There's a couple of different camps with different views on whether intermittent fasting is beneficial. All I want to do in this video is talk about my own experience with it and the research that I've done and how it's benefited uh, me and my training and my health and wellness uh, endeavors. So the approach to intermittent fasting that I'm using right now is the 16-8 fasting window. So basically you're fasting for 16 hours and you have eight hour eating window and you can sort of reorganize that however you like. The most common way and the way that I'm using is to not eat during the first part of the day, you're basically skipping breakfast and you have your first meal, meal of the day around noon or one o'clock and then you eat until eight or nine o'clock at night. Uh, you have your, th your basically a couple of meals at least or two or three meals within that eight hour window and then from eight or nine o'clock you don't eat until noon or one the next day. And you know what, a lot of people I've talked to, even a lot of clients have a hard time eating breakfast anyway or they just are not hungry in the morning and they have a lot of resistance toward eating breakfast and I historically I used to say no nope, most important meal of the day you got to get in that breakfast to get your energy going in the start of the day and jumpstart your metabolism blah 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 but the more I've read that's really not the case as long as you're hitting your total micro macronutrient and caloric needs over the course of the day the number of meals the frequency of eating is really secondary now meal timing might play a certain amount, a certain role related to your activity level like I do believe that post-workout it is helpful to eat within a couple of hours and get in the macronutrients you need within a couple of hours after your workout especially after a strength training workout but aside from that your meal timing is really secondary so if you are eating three square meals a day that's totally fine if you choose to eat six times a day because you're uh, in a hypertrophy phase and you're eating a, a crap load of calories and it's really tough to get those calories in those three meals great eat more often the thing, the, one, uh, a few of the benefits for our intermittent fasting and uh, reduced frequency of meals, basically having a longer period of time where you have an empty stomach, is that your insulin levels are, are far lower for the majority of the day. Every time you eat, no matter what it is, certain foods, obviously sugar foods and whatnot, typically have a higher effect on insulin than other foods. But uh, anytime you eat, insulin is, is spiked, is affected. Now, insulin is not bad. There's a lot of hype around insulin you know, being the fat storage hormone and whatnot insulin is a storage hormone period so it's necessary for uptaking all kinds of nutrients into your body we need it the, the, the problem arises when it becomes there's imbalances in your hormones so in our typical North American diet a lot of people eat more than necessary I mean more than 50 percent of the population is overweight that says something right there there's an overconsumption of calories period and there's uh, blood sugar problems uh, diabetes and uh, metabolic syndrome, uh, a lot of digestive problems. So it's pretty safe to say that for the majority of our population, uh, there is an overconsumption problem going on here. So restricting calories somewhat is part of the solution to that, or increasing activity as well. But the benefit of actually having a fasted period where your, empty, your stomach is empty for a, a prolonged period of time is when your insulin levels are low for an extended period of time growth hormone levels typically are higher there's an antagonist relationship between insulin and growth hormone and growth hormone is related to it's I look at it as the youth hormone It's related to longevity obviously this is an oversimplification but intermittent fasting has been shown to prolong lifespan so as well as caloric restriction as it does as well so this is especially of interest for myself in my 40s that uh, longevity is interesting uh, I, I pretty much I dig this existence I want to live as long as I I can and uh, definitely anything to increase longevity is of interest to me so that's definitely one benefit uh, supporting your immune function is another one so supporting a healthy immune system fasting also plays a beneficial role in, role in reducing inflammation in the body and something I just learned about recently was uh, autophagy so this is um, I'll post a link to some more information down below on it but this is basically the removal of, of dead tissues and cells and the renewal of them so the removal and renewal of cell, cellular tissue and this supports longevity as well it's, it uh, 
slow was the aging process as well. And fasting and caloric restriction ha play a crucial role in autophagy. And the other obvious benefit to fasting is metabolic or energetic efficiency. So you become much more efficient with the calories you do take in, so you end up needing less to perform the same amount of work. For longevity, anti-aging effects, and the other benefits I just listed, uh, intermittent fasting plays a very crucial role, and it certainly supports fat loss. It's very easy to maintain a caloric deficit when you have a larger window of time that you're fasted where you're not eating. So if you're restricting calories and you're only getting two or three meals within an eight-hour window, that makes it much easier to maintain that, that caloric restriction. Some of the considerations when you are fasting is that you want to make sure that you're still hitting your total nutrient needs, your macronutrient and micronutrient needs within that eating window. So this plays a role in your food choices. And in my opinion, food quality does make, make a difference. Obviously, you can maintain a lower body composition um, and build muscle eating crappy food or processed food, but there will be health repercussions on that. So for me, I choose to have an 80-20 split, 80% 80 of my food coming from whole foods or less processed foods. And uh, the way I work my training into the mix is I do my, if I'm going to be performing cardiovascular exercise, high intensity interval training is my choice for cardiovascular exercise. I perform that early in the day during my fasted state. And then I perform my strength training workout either right after my first meal or right before uh, early afternoon. So I'm getting my biggest meal post strength training, right after my strength training workout. And there are new other benefits to that as well. So there are different ways to incorporate intermittent fasting. And it's not really, I don't look at it as a diet. I look at it as just an eating schedule. So it's just planning longer periods of having an empty stomach in your diet. And the way I, I talked about the uh, skipping breakfast, basically, is a very simple way to do that. But there's also people who do uh, two days of eating, one day of fasting, um, one full day fast a week, just as uh, you know, not eating from dinner the one day, nothing the next day, and then breakfast the following day. Um, I'll post a link to my blog post on the screen here as well as in the description section below. And I link to a number of different ways you can incorporate intermittent fasting, some of the other benefits that I didn't discuss in this video, and some of the research that's on that. So if this is something you've heard about but you haven't really explored or you're sort of on the fence about it or you're very opinionated on it one way or the other, do check out that link. Look into it a little further. Um, for myself, I've noticed a, a number of different benefits as far as even digestion, maintaining a low body fat percentage. Um, I've, made, I've been able to maintain lean tissue. I've noticed other benefits as far as um, focus, concentration, memory. Uh, I'm meditating a lot now as well and I, I found that meditating during a fasted state I'm able to get into a, a deeper relaxation or a deeper state of uh, presence and focused concentration when I'm fasted. So there are some brain benefits as well to being in a fasted state. So definitely explore this. Uh, I, I'm not here to debate one versus other. I'm here to share my experience and the definite positive effect that it's had on my life. This is definitely something I'm going to be using as far as I can foresee going forward for the rest of my life, which hopefully is a very long one. So to anyone watching, if you have any questions or comments, do post them down below. If you like the video, give it a like and make sure you subscribe. There's more coming up soon. And until next time, stay strong.